everyone. My name is Alan Jones, and I give you a warm welcome to another live story coming to you from Live Stories Worldwide. We bring you stories from across the world, and stories go out again to many, many parts of the world. If you want to contact us, you can contact us through our website, lifestoriesworldwide.com. We are live on StreamYard, Zoom, Facebook, and YouTube, and also on our website. You can watch us directly on our website, lifestoriesworldwide.com. We have a stories from people who've gone through all different types of challenges and how they've come through and how their lives have been transformed. Our speaker today is from the UK. He was originally from Eastern uh, Nigeria, and he came over to the UK where he's now working as a pharmacist. He had an experience in his life when he was at university in Lagos, and uh, he's going to share his story with you tonight. Give me a great pleasure to invite Isaac to share his story. Thank you, Isaac. Uh, thank you, Alan, and uh, thank you for having me tonight. Um, it's indeed a pleasure uh, to be asked to share my uh, life story, the story of my life and how the Lord Jesus uh, visited me and gave me the free gift of salvation. You know, it's really amazing because it's not just the story of my life, but it is indeed the story of Jesus in my life. So it's all about Jesus and I give glory to God. So uh, in talking about my life stories, it's good to give you just a, bit, a, a, a quick introduction again about myself. I'm a reverse missionary from Nigeria. My name is Isaac Kingston. I'm a pharmacist and I live in Lancashire, in Leyland, in Lancashire. I'm married to Rebecca and we have two boys, Sam and Judah. I came from a very big family. I was born in the eastern part of uh, Nigeria, a place called Enugu, you know, and uh, I grew up in Enugu. And I was born a Catholic. Um, I, I went to a Catholic school, primary, secondary, and then I got into the university when I was um, about 18 years. So the story of my life is divided into about four parts. You know, as a young boy growing up a Catholic, and then when I went into the university to study pharmacy, and then uh, a part of when I was a bit backsliding, and then another part where the Lord fully visited me and restored me. So um, I want to thank you once again, and I want to encourage you to give some time to listen to my life story is going to impact your life. I believe that tonight the Lord Jesus, Yeshua Hamashiach, will speak to you through my own life story because he said we should be witnesses unto him. So I'm just a witness tonight. Okay. Okay. So I was born a good Catholic. Uh, my dad was a uh, a king in the village, you know, so I have uh, a kind of a royal blood, but those are not important when you meet Jesus, you know. Anyway, a family, a big family of 12, seven boys and five girls, because my dad was a king, so he was allowed to, you know, have four wives or even more. <laughs> okay, so anyway, so after I've grown up and then got to the stage of being, um, getting into the university, at 18 years, all I was looking forward to was just to run away from God, run away from my family. I just want to enjoy my life. I wanted to explore. So university offered me that escape route. And all I was saying to myself was, the moment I get into uni, I'm going to do the things I couldn't do at home. And then I got into uni, and apparently one of my roommates was already going to the students' fellowship. And I decided to join him because I was thinking when we get there, we'll also meet some people, meet some friends, and of course, meet some girls as well. So when we got there, we were worshiping. I was looking at them. I mean, coming from a, a Catholic background, it was a bit strange to me. We we're just singing and worshiping God, and he was baptized in the Holy Ghost. In fact, he was on the floor 
and rolling and speaking in this strange tongue I've never, you know, heard before. So when we got back to the room, I said, what happened to you? And he explained to me that he had been seeking the Lord and that he had been seeking for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I said, Lord, I want that. Because that was like a real life experience. Somebody so close to me having an encounter with Jesus. So thereafter, I continued going to the Students Fellowship. And from there, I gave my life to Jesus. And I went for the water baptism. And I was just, you know, going for the fellowship. And it was really good. It was, it was awesome. For the first time in my life, I could pray in a different way. Not in the Orthodox Catholic way. I could pray in a different way. I could sing songs. I didn't read much of my Bible. And that wasn't really good. I have to say that. I didn't read much of my Bible. So after one year, my friend had moved to another university and I was left with some bad friends. So there was a moment of backsliding. And then it carried on. I wasn't a serious believer at that point in time because mostly I wasn't reading my Bible. But the Lord was patient with me. I finished uni, moved to Lagos, and I was now living in Lagos looking for a job as a pharmacist and then mixing, meeting some of my friends who are not Christians. You know, the Bible says evil cor uh, communication will corrupt good manners. You know, show me your friends, I'll show you who you are. So I got some of my old friends that were not, um, they don't really uh, want to go to church. They don't really want to serve God. And I began to interact with them and they began to lead me astray. And then I remember one night we went to a place in Lagos. Uh, it's a place called Isola in Lagos. We've gone with about two cars, just going to have something like a house party. And while we were there, some armed robbers came in with guns, machine gun, but different kinds of gun. And they put us on the floor and they said they were going to kill us. Oh my goodness, I was so scared. In fact, I think I must have died. My hands were cold, my feet were cold, and I said, Lord, if I come out of this place alive, I'm going to serve you for the rest of my life. And I don't know what happened, but I think it was a miracle. They changed their mind. They were going to shoot us. They didn't shoot us. They just robbed the, the whole house, robbed us, and then they fled. But when I got up from where I was lying down, I knew this is a turning point in my life that I really need to clean up. Because while I was on the floor, I could see all my sins before me, all my backsliding states. And I knew if I had died at that point in time, I would have gone straight to hellfire. But God gave me another chance. And you know what? I began to be serious. And there was something I did, which I would like to let you know. Now, one thing I did when I got back home was I picked up my Bible and I began to read it from cover to cover. In those days, they used to say, start from the book of John. I read the book of John in one breath, read it like my pharmacy book. I think that was what the Lord was saying to me. Because I used to say to the Lord, I want you to visit me the way you visited my roommate. He said, but can you read your Bible? Because why, when you study the Bible and take it seriously, if you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. So I began to eat the word of God day and night. And as I was doing this, you know what happened? One day, the glory of God came down. I must have done this for about three months, just reading. I'll go back to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts of Apostles. I will read the prayers in Ephesians. I was praying them. You know, I recommitted my life to the Lord. And I said, Lord, baptize me with the Holy Ghost. And that was exactly what happened to me. One day, I was just in my room reading the Bible, and I fell into a trance, and there was a straight light that passed through the window of my room, and I was covered in clouds, and the next thing I saw was I saw the hand, the hand of the Lord. He picked me up, and I was just 
lost in the clouds. The clouds had covered my room. And I remember what he was saying to me. I didn't know the scripture then. I couldn't. It was later I saw the scriptures in Isaiah. But he was consoling me. He was saying, I will help you. I will be your God. I will strengthen you. I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. Wow. And I just turned around. I say, I was saying to myself, is this thing real or is this a dream? And at the same time, with that glory that came and the light that came into my room, I was baptized in the Holy Spirit and I was speaking in tongues. It was really, really awesome. I did not want the experience to end. I said, Lord, I want to be with you forever. So in one second, I said, is this real? I'm going to touch him. I want to touch him. And I knew it was the right hand because when you see the right elbow, you will know. So I just touched him and grabbed him on his right elbow, the right arm, rather. And then he vanished. Wow. I lay down on the bed for about 30 minutes or one hour. I don't even know. I lost conscious of time. And I remember that was on the um, on Wednesday, the 16th of March, 1996. And that was a day of fellowship. My church was just down the street. I got to the church and they began to worship. Oh my God, the same experience happened. And they were singing a song and they said, heaven came down and glory filled my soul. And I didn't want that song to end. I wanted them to continue singing that song. You know, when the service finally ended, I didn't want to leave the church. I just wanted to be there. And the Lord visited me in a mighty way. From that day going forward, 16th of March, 1996, I have never gone back. The Lord has kept me because that experience, I touched eternity. I touched the one who was, who is, and who is to come. But I want to go back a bit and say that it didn't just happen exactly that way. And I want to say this to encourage us. I have three older brothers that were always praying for me in different ways. And this is what I believe we should be doing for other people. If you're hearing the sound of my voice tonight, I want you to know that Jesus loves you and he wants you to give your life to him. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. The benefit we get out of it, sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus also said, what shall he profit a man if he gains the whole world or loses his soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whatever we are doing that is not reading the Bible or worshiping God, we are exchanging our soul. And the Bible also said that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him, it doesn't matter who you are, a man, a woman, a boy, a girl, whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. That is the amazing grace of God. That is the good news that I bring to you tonight, my friend. There's only one good news. And that good news is the amazing grace of God that if I was the only person living in the world today, if you were the only person living in the world today, Jesus would have still come to save you. That is the personal amazing grace story. Because he loved us so much. You see, friends, Jesus had to shed his blood for the remission of our sins. You remember when John the Baptist saw Jesus, he said, behold, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away, that takes away the sin of the world, that washes away the sin of the world, S-I-N, singular, the sin of Adam and Eve. 
And that tells you and tells me that everybody was born a sinner because we inherited the sin of Adam and Eve before our own personal sins. The origin of sin, the source of sin. Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the whole world. So what Jesus came to do was to blot out, to wash away our sins. Because if Adam sinned against God, it would take another man to die. And that was Jesus. And he was 100% man and 100% God to be able to redeem us fully back to God. And that is exactly what happened to me. That was my experience. I also understood from my three older brothers that humans, we are created to live forever. It depends on where you're going to be spending your eternity in or out. Is it going to be in heaven with God and the holy angels or is it going to be in hellfire? That is not good for us. It's not good for anybody. Nobody wants to go there. So accepting Jesus it's all bonuses. There's nothing to lose. Why would somebody say no to an amazing grace? Something that didn't cost you anything. Just to swallow my pride and your pride and accept the fact that Jesus had died in my place because the, the wages of sin is death. We were all doomed to die. But Jesus said, I will die for them. I will die instead of them. That is the good news that I bring to you tonight, my friends. Jesus loves you so much that he was willing to go all the way to shed his blood. Because it's only the blood of God-man, Jesus, that can wash away our sins. That's the way it is. We can't change it. That's a spiritual law. I work as a pharmacist at the NHS, and we say that when you give blood, you give life. So what did Jesus do? He was giving his eternal blood to give us eternal life. And that's why he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody can go to the Father except through me. There is only one mediator between God and man. There's only one person that can bridge the gap between God and man, and that is the man, Jesus Christ. That's what he's done for me and for you. And my friends, tonight, I will pray that you would receive him, that you will accept him as your Lord and Savior. And I was going to talk about my three brothers. They really impacted my life. And this is what I try to do for other people as well, to preach the gospel to give my life story and see if you can see light through my own light. If you can get life through my own life. Because the life is the light of man. The life story is the light of man. And the light shines in darkness and the darkness will not understand it. So I'm going to go back to my three brothers. The first one was trained in the medical field. That one was the first one to get saved. He wouldn't preach to me. He wouldn't even pray for me much. But he would say, I want to take you to church. To a, not, the, not the other church that I used to go to believers meeting. And that was the first person that took me to a believers assembly where I saw people singing and dancing. They were very poor people, but they were all happy. In fact, sometimes I said, no, I don't want to go. He said, okay, I'm going to give you 10 Naira, which was equivalent of 10 pounds. He will pay me money to take me to church. He was paying a price. It will look like, oh, is he trying to bribe me or trying to, you know, make me do it? But that was good. It works out for good. 
because for the first time in my life, I could see people that were very poor, and yet they were happy worshiping God in the unorthodox way. My second brother is a lawyer. And maybe his profession helped him because he will be always praying for me. He will wake up in the midnight and was always, always praying for me. He had a prayer book. And one day he wasn't there, so I decided to look into his prayer book. And my dad was number one on the list, and I was number two. I was really, really touched by the fact that he was praying for me. I was saying, am I really that bad that somebody had to be praying for me? That also touched me. And my third brother was, uh, he studied um, agriculture. He was more uh, wanting to be a farmer. He likes to farm. And what he did for me was he gave me the hard word of God. He said to me, Isaac, if you do not repent, you're going to die and you're going to go straight to hellfire. Remember that I warned you. He said that many times. He says, repent or perish. I didn't really like to listen to that. But all those things they said to me, all those things they did for me, all the prayers they prayed over my life, contributed for what the Lord has done in my life then and even up to now. Because that paved the way for the Lord to arrest me. And my point is this, my friends, I will be praying for you. I'll be praying for my family members. I'll be praying for people on my streets because you never knew how far and how long your prayer is going to go. So this is the story of my life. And I really want to thank God for this story. And I'm going to give you room to be able to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And it is really very simple. Like I said before, why would you say no to a bonus? Jesus is giving you a bonus today. Why would somebody say no to the bean man? He wants to take your bean away. He wants to take all the rubbishes away. He says, come unto me, all ye that are heavily laden. All ye that are burdened. Sin is a burden, is a weight. He wants to take it away. He says, come unto me, all ye that are heavily burdened and laden with sin, and I will give you rest. (laughs) 